baby! Oh, yeah, he's firing, so... Light him up as we walk into the cone here. And into the rate fight. Close the distance again. This is where it's dangerous, so we want to kind of walk across his nose here. Into the cone we were talking about before. Boost here. Because we want to. Ooh, he got a hit on us. Lost our shields. Nice. So now it's dangerous because we've ovaled out. Uh, I'll explain what ovaling out means. Right, into the cone, nice and tight. And left strafe as I try to keep holding an angle. And then eventually, right around here, he's going to fall out of the circle. Now we kind of go back into the circle cone, slowly keep working on them, working on them, working on them, two size twos. Now it looks like he's lost the orientation. Oh, want to keep working around him. There it is. Yeah, he's getting excited on me. All right, Hawk, let's, let's play. I'm not too worried about his EMP. He'll pop it now. Yeah, but my shields are still up. And then I'll stay in his yaw. Like this here. So he's in trouble now. So I'm inside the bubble now. Oh, now, now it's dangerous. Now it's dangerous. So I'll back up, get my shields up. And move my way out of position against him. Keep on working on him. Easy extension. Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about what to do when the fight begins to what's called oval out. Okay, And put very simply, um, when your fight starts to extend, what to do uh, and how best to prepare for the extension. Right. So this fight we have an Eclipse Stealth Bomber that I was doing missions with and we had a Bounty Hunter come at us in a Ares um, Starfighter Ion. So uh, you'll see here we're into the rate fight again, fighting for position. His turn rate being as low as it is. Now, right here, our speeds are starting to climb, and this is what I'm talking about about, about the fight inertia out. So uh, now that our speed has accelerated so far, I have no more like my maneuverability is not high enough to be able to stay at that range with that turn rate. So as soon as the energy picks up in the fight, you'll notice that my positional advantage slowly slips away, right? So right now our speeds are low enough that my positional advantage can be relatively held in place. And I'm, I'm, I'm gaining an angle on them here. But again, our speeds start to increase and the circle starts to get larger. And if I want to keep my guns on target, I have to sacrifice. Uh, once the energy goes up, I have to start sacrificing my position and start pre-nosing. And if I don't want to pre-nose, then eventually I will what's called oval out or I'll, I'll extend too far, right? So if you want to stay close at high speed, you have to pre-nose. So there's a point at which you start to slip away. And that point happens around three, four, five hundred meters per second, right? Depending on the ship. Okay, so we're going to look at another fight here where that kind of happens as well. So this fight was versus uh, a PvP Hawk Bounty Hunter who was chasing us down during the last stream. And we also get a great opportunity to see kind of how we can best deal with an EMP. And if not used correctly, the EMP kind of, in a lot of ways, working against this player. So we go into the standard procedure. Again, fighting inside the cone as we, as we get close. Boom, there comes his EMP. But... Again, he pops it too far away, so it doesn't really do much 
much shield damage at all. So he had to have been a lot closer if he wants to kind of get that uh, in the position he wants it in. So we see here we're getting into the rate fight. And again, the Eclipse is not a purebred dogfighter. I mean, she can sort of fight if you're doing it right. But again, these are fundamental movement uh, tactics here, right? So here we go into the rate fight, still chasing my nose, still rolling, still using my bottom thrusters. Notice how I'm intentionally keeping my vector indicator just down and to the left so I can continue moving in that pattern. And then here it gets interesting. My shields get knocked down quite low. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to chase because my energy is built up. So what I end up doing is I end up extending intentionally. And it's a good, it's a good time. If, as soon as you merge, that's when you have to decide. So as we passed each other on that last little bit, I decided to disengage for a minute, get my shields back up. Because the next pop for the EMP, which is coming soon, there it is. It's too far away. It doesn't do enough damage. We've once again escaped death. And we've escaped the Clesher Prison sentence from getting EMP'd, right? And now we're back into the raid fight. Now he doesn't have his EMP. Again, into the corkscrew type motion. Into the raid fight again, which he's decided doesn't he doesn't really want to take place in. And he's moving a lot in his yaw as well. So when it comes to extensions, uh, let's pull it back to the Crusader Ares uh, Starfighter because I want to explain something real quick. So it's this moment right here that kind of explains what I'm talking about, what it calls ovaling out. As the velocity of the enemy fighter increases, the amount of demand on my maneuvering thrusters increases along uh, with the enemy fighter's increase in velocity. So in order for me to maintain this position where I'm outside his turn rate and I'm orbiting around my target, his only choice is to increase velocity, whether that be through his bottom thrusters. See, now he's increasing, increasing, increasing velocity, and I'm losing, losing, losing track on him because I cannot simply keep up with him with my maneuvering thrusters on the Eclipse. And this happens to all fighters. Depending on the ship, depends on when you will slip out of those corners. Now, when you start to notice the slipping, when you start to notice that you're slipping out of position because his, his velocity is gradually increasing, don't panic. Give that. Give yourself an opportunity to get the distance you need, so that when he does get guns back on you, you'll notice that you're at a at a better range. So in this situation, I knew that I was slowly slipping out of the corner, so I intentionally disengaged. I actually let. I actually gave up the position. I kind of. I kind of let the throttle go a little bit, and I started to let myself drift away from him without trying to keep fighting for position. Because what I didn't want to do was be at close range, in a position where he could potentially hit me. Now, he does end up hitting me once during this fight, but it's a glancing hit, and it takes my entire, both my size shields down. So this gives you an idea of if you make a mistake against a ship like this, I mean, it's pretty much game over, especially if you're in something like an Eclipse or an Arrow or even a Gladius, right? So you only get uh, one or two chances to make a mistake against a ship like this. Now, if you don't make a mistake, the chance that the Ares Ion Starfighter is going to be able to kill you is almost nothing. Um, I mean, the ship is not designed to be a dogfighter, and it shows, right? So this this talk about the ship being overpowered and people complaining about, you know, I, I'm sorry to say it. The truth is, if you're getting killed by this thing, it's because you don't have your fundamentals down. It's not the ship's fault. It's you, right? Now, that might bruise some egos, but that's the truth. Um, so let's jump to the Hawk real quick, and I want to kind of explain a point here. So during this fight, I want to kind of come at it from the opposite perspective. I want us as the defending ship versus a more maneuverable fighter to know when is a good time to extend the circle. So during the merge right here, that's the best time to make a choice. I can continue in with my thruster and, and keep the fight close, but because my shields are down and he has a close range EMP, it's not in my best interest to, to, to risk death that way. So what I did here was I ended up extending with a back strafe as I crossed that as I crossed that merge. Right? The best time to extend is when two ships are the closest together with the highest amount of acceleration against each other. So like a merge, like both ships are coming at each other. Once they cross, then you start to extend out. And because we were able to extend out during that, he was uh, again too early on his EMP and tried to get close but at that point advantage goes back to me because in this case he's not making any kind of uh, counter maneuvering towards the shots that I'm putting onto him he is close by he is using cannons but again as we move back into the cone 
and we start to slowly move around them. Because again, it's not about making large deflections. It's about making smooth translational deflections against him in a small area, which just enough deflection to avoid the shots coming in and allowing us to kind of continuously put damage on the enemy target until eventually there's the kill. All right, guys, that's today's video. Uh, I just wanted to go into detail, like I said, about extending, understanding extensions, whether you're in the defensive or the offensive position. The first video against the, Iris, uh, the Ares Ion Starfighter was us in an offensive position, and the Hawk was us in a more defensive position. So when to, when to extend, or, uh, you know, and then on the first video, it's when to push, and then also when to realize, okay, I've lost the turn, and that's okay. Now you need to better prepare yourself for when the, the fight returns to a nose-to-nose -nose as you slowly cross and cone yourself back into a raid fight, which then allows you to do the same process again, right? All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for all the love and support all of you folks have shown me. I hope to see all you guys up for stream. We stream every day. And ultimately, you know, thanks again. I really love making this stuff. I hope this is educational. I hope you're entertained. And ultimately, I hope to see all you folks improve, right? If you get shot down nine times get up 10. Just keep flying, keep enjoying yourself, and I'm sure I'll see you guys out there. I was Avenger 1, and I'll see you next time.